Hi, thanks for joining me today where we're going to be talking about excuses and expectations. Excuses are our enemies. Excuses are indicators, believe it or not, of pride that says, I'm not going to do it God's way and then I'm not going to admit that it's my fault when I don't. That's pride. So we need expectations, not excuses. So here's your thing to remember. E is for expectations, not excuses. And we don't want to do that backwards. What we usually do is we've got expectations about other people's behavior and excuses for our own. Instead, we want to have expectations about our own behavior and then maybe make excuses for other people. You know, I was taught, I was reading about people that live forever, seems like. Some people um, live 130 to 150 years and they're in good shape when they die. Um, various places in the world, they don't have the same diet, but they do have some other factors in common. But one of the things that occurred to me was these people have high expectations. They are born knowing I'm probably going to live 130 to 150 years. That's in their mind. So if they get sick when they're 100, they don't say, oh, well, I'm probably going to die from this. They just fight it and keep going. They speak, think, imagine long life. They have great expectations about their longevity, and that makes all the difference in, in how you live. Uh, whatever you expect is what you're going to imagine. It's what you're going to focus on. It's what you're going to speak. And the Bible tells us in Proverbs the power of the tongue over and over. And in one verse, I believe Proverbs 18 says, there is power of life and death in the tongue. You will have what you say. So, we don't need to be making excuses because that just says, it is what it is. And, you know, there you are. Um, I want everybody that ever listens to this to be embarrassed to ever say that again. All right. So, the thing is, when you make excuses enough, you're going to lose and you're going to keep losing and you're going to keep losing and then you get battle weary. And ultimately, you quit. And, you know, you're, when you make excuses for losing, you, you're saying losing is okay. It isn't okay for a child of God. We are not supposed to be losing. Um, so, you know, and you can't just say, well, you know, that makes sense. And, yeah, I think I should quit making excuses. You have to get God's Holy Spirit. You have to let the counselor counsel you. You have to let him speak, let his light illuminate your thinking. We don't know what we think. Reveal hidden traps and strongholds. Secret sins. Psalm 1912 talks about secret sins. And you know, I used to think when I'd read that, well, that's sins that I'm not telling anybody about. But as I read it and got revelation on it, I realized those are sins I'm keeping secret from myself. I'm not facing up to... I don't even know that I do them. They've, I've done them for so long. And so as I begin to ask God, reveal these to me, he's been revealing them to me. And so since that's such a big deal, I'm going to read this verse uh, in different translations. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Who can discern his errors? Clear thou me from hidden faults. Who can understand his errors or omissions? Acquit me of hidden, unconscious, unintended faults. Who can discern his lapses and errors? Clear me from hidden and unconscious faults. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse me from secret faults. Who perceives his unintentional sins? Cleanse me from my hidden faults. And finally, but can anyone know that they've accidentally done wrong? Clear me of any unknown sin. God answers prayers like that. He has been doing a mighty work in me for quite some time. And it really started with COVID, which has actually turned into a blessing for me because it's made me call on God like I really never have before for an extended period of time. So when we, when we deal with and we're set free uh, from sin, which is missing God's best, that's what it is, acting in a way that's not who we're created to act, doing things that are harmful to us, and that grieve the heart of God because he loves us so much. Um, when we're set free, beginning with abiding in his love, because love undergirds and works with faith, and this is all about faith, our expectations change, and they go from paltry and pathetic and pitiful to powerful. 
great expectations. So, you know, when we don't do things God's way, it, what we're doing is we're at, we're at war with who we really are. But when we speak the truth about it, you know, uh, I was in a store the other day and this man was waiting on John and me and he started talking about, you know, getting old and it just gets worse. And I said, I don't receive that. I'm not receiving that. So I'm spitting in the devil's eye when he says stuff like that. And people think you're kind of nuts. Well, I don't care what people think. I'm the one that is going to live out my life according to the way God wants it lived out. All right. So the spirit of faith is always helpful when you're trying to be radically um, on board with God. The spirit of faith by Mark Hankins. And he says... The spirit of faith believes and speaks the unlimited possibilities, believes and speaks, and speaks and therefore believes. This all goes together. The unlimited possibilities of God. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Luke 1, 37. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. The spirit of faith will make a tadpole slap a whale. It will make you swing out over hell on a corn stalk and spit in the devil's eye. You can never achieve the impossible if you never attempt the impossible. And you'll never attempt the impossible as long as you keep speaking and imagining and thinking that everything is impossible. The spirit of faith will position you to possess God's best blessings. That was Mark Hankins. If, it, if all this is new to you or is kind of difficult for you, uh, get the spirit of faith and read it all the time. Read it and read it, read it, because it, you don't reprogram a lifetime of wrong programming with just hearing one broadcast about it. So, I want to begin wrapping this up by saying we have choices, and we make our choices based on what we believe. And if our lives are just one big mess about which we're always making excuses, then we got to change what we believe. We have to begin to get that promised, promised by God, and he cannot lie, promised, renewed mind. Um, that's ours when we give our lives to Jesus and decide we didn't just give our, give our life to him and now we're taking it all back. But we're actually going to live and learn how to live and not perish from a lack of knowledge, which is what the word says we do. John 30, or 8.32 says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. How about that? So um, before a parting gift I have for you, I want to give you a final word that is for parents, but it applies to everyone, everyone who has a relationship with anyone. And this is from Choices, a, another excellent, excellent book. Um, can't say enough about this book. And she's talking about um, the absence of the father in the home and that, you know, beginning really with the Industrial Revolution and changing our whole society so much. Um, but this applies to any relationship, and she says, They say absence makes the heart grow fonder. Well, perhaps for a day or two. But absence throughout a childhood creates strangers. We simply cannot parent a child whose heart we do not know. We simply cannot parent a child whose heart we do not know. So... Get to know the heart of your child. Get to know the heart of, of everyone that you're around. Uh, don't expect them to be like you. Don't expect them to get you or you to get them. Just get to know their heart and let God use you to bless their heart. Okay, my parting gift is from Lana Vazer, who is a gift to the world. And uh, I was listening to her talk about unpacking your bags and how she had a, a vision or a dream, I think it was a vision, of... Um, uh, these people that were heavily laden and and a butterfly that was being squished even and they, they were carrying by all this weight they were carrying and these bags and each bag was labeled um, and they were heavy and one was labeled trauma, disappointment, um, concern, stress, battle weariness, fear, anger and um, so she said the Lord was saying unpack your bags and he talked about you know you who are burdened, I will give you rest. But you have to come to me. And 
Then 1 Peter 5, 7 says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so at the proper time, time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him, because he cares for you. And so she was saying that um, she drew pictures of these bags of different things in her life that she was carrying, that she wasn't supposed to be carrying. And so I did that. And I, I have all these ex excellent art here that you may or not be able to see. And um, so I actually was dealing with some of them and crossing them off and changing the way I was looking at them. For instance, uh, time management. I changed that to, I don't want to manage my time. Because if God manages my time, so much more will get done. So much more uh, beautiful things will happen. My life will be lived in unforced rhythms of grace that the Bible talks about. A, a po it will be poetry. And uh, so various other things that I dealt with and prayed about as I, as I made that picture. And then the final word um, she said was that the Lord said, a concern a day keeps the doctor away. And he said, choose one concern a day. Just pick one. And it doesn't have to be one that anybody else would even think should be a concern. But it's on your heart, so it's on God's heart. Pick that one concern. Lay it before God. Stay in his presence until you have revelation, until he speaks about this. Until that concern is put to rest. So thank you so much for being with me. And I will be uh, doing a tea party, historical tea party focusing on William Penn and his um, holy experiment tomorrow. So I hope you can uh, catch that. I think it will be a blessing. And again, thank you very much. Bye.